As you can see, I am not Pastor Jeff. But uh, just give me the same or more patience than what you give him, okay? So, with this short notice that I had this morning, me and the kids were going to make turkeys out of our handprints. So, Mark and um, Jerry is going to show us how. So, we're gonna, we have a limited amount of paper this morning. And what we're going to do... So here's how we do this. Now I only have one pair of scissors, so help me out. Come on, Jerry, get down here. We'll have to share. Don't cut your spouse's hair, okay? But what we're going to do is you're going to take your favorite color and you're going to put your hand on here like this. You're going to trace it. We're going to cut it out. That's today's lesson today. So I figured if it was good for the children, it's good for the bigger children too, right? The biggest kid in the, the biggest. Store, what are we talking about? <laughs> But anyway, no, I actually do. We, we uh, I do actually have something for y'all. But um, being Thanksgiving week, we're going to talk about thankfulness. That's a uh, so thankfulness. Uh, when times are good, thankfulness comes pretty easy, don't it? We can relate. Boy, things are going really good. You know, I think things are going good. Maybe a job's going really good for you. You know, all your uh, all of what you think is important to you is going good. Everything's, everything's all checked off on your boxes that you uh, want to check off, and things are going great. So it's easy to be thankful then. Or sometimes, really, for me, I can forget to be thankful because everything's going good, you know, so I forget. So, but sometimes life, as you well know, can throw us curveballs. Things we don't expect, you know, times can be tough. This year, especially, we've all experienced some tough times with what our country is going through. Being quarantined and our pandemic that we're going through, going through a presidential election we just went through, rioting are just a few, just a few things that we've went through this year that we can all share that we've all been through. You know, and we all have our own personal life that we go through, our own personal testimonies, you know, so we all go through individual issues, you know, maybe it's a divorce or a relationship problem we've come through this year or currently going through, um, a diagnosis that we're maybe awaiting or already know of, you know, and we have many parents and grandparents in here, we have the responsibility of parenting and trying to raise a family and to grow our children, that is, that can be, we have problems doing that. I know my girls are really cute and cuddly and they act perfect but at the house not so much okay I don't know what it is but they don't always get along so but as we've all experienced life has its ups and its downs we all know that there's nothing new that I'm telling you but I want you to remember okay that through our ups and through our downs God is still with you He's with you the same way when you're on the mountaintop, and His presence is the same when you're in the valley. It doesn't change. It does not change. It is during the down times, or the times that we're not unsure, or the times we're doubtful, that if we let Him and we continue to seek after Him, he will, at that time, grow us and mature us in faith and lead us. So we can grow even when we don't feel like God's even with us at all. Our job is to let Him continue to do His work in us. Even when we don't feel His presence, you continue to seek after Him and what God says in His Word. So we're going to start out with um, Bill, uh, or no, you're not Bill. <laughs> Becky, sorry Becky in uh, Psalms 107 I will be reading out of the uh, New Living Translation yes, that's pretty bad um, so Psalms 107 verse 1 sorry it says give thanks to the Lord for he is good 
His faithful love endures forever. (sighs) Has the Lord redeemed you? This is a question. Then speak out. Tell others He has redeemed you from your enemies. For He has gathered the exiles from many lands, from east and west and north and south. As believers, okay, we can all be thankful that God redeemed us. We can hold on to His never failing and always enduring love that He has for each one of us. This love that He has for us, He lavishes on us each and every day. Each and every day as we go through our lives. Through His love and His Word, we will have a firm foundation to weather whatever life can throw at us. And it's got some doozy curveballs in it. So we need to remember, give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Amen? He is good. His love endures forever. In Philippians, to kind of help reinforce this, in chapter 4, verse 4, I touched on this a little while back, but it says, verse 4 says, Always, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone you see, let everyone see that you are considerate to all you do, in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for what He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard our hearts and minds as we live in Christ Jesus. So in this passage, I know for me personally, it gives me great comfort to know that I don't have to worry about anything. Now, do I sometimes? Yeah, I do. I can't tell you that I live a worry-free life. But I hold fast to this, that God tells me to take every single one of those worries in prayer to Him. So rather than worry about what your next step is, why don't... You take that worry and pray to God and He will tell you what that next step is. And during this, He will give you His peace that will guard your heart and mind in your time of trouble. He gives it to you freely as you pursue after Him and seek Him in prayer. It's easy to do these things when things are going well. You know, it's when they're not that sometimes we need to, all what we gather and we study on and we learn and we try to meditate on, you know, it seems to kind of come pretty easy whenever things are going good, but when they're not and you don't understand, If we read farther down in verse 8 and 9 in the same chapter here, it says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me. Everything you hear from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. So our job is to fix our thoughts 
on Jesus, His truths, whatever is honorable and right and pure, rather than thinking about what might not be going right or a problem that we may be facing, whether it be personal or as a nation, we need to fix our thoughts on God and what He says because He is ultimately in control. Because the next thing I know, when I start worrying about something, if I don't stop myself and fix my thoughts on what is true and noble and right, they don't naturally go that way. They go to the worst case scenario that's going to happen. And then that does not help my worry out one single bit. It just compounds my problem. So as we go through trials of life, we need to remember to fix our thoughts on Jesus. Having the right attitude and thoughts in our circumstances will help us to focus on Him so that we can come boldly to His throne of grace. It's there. We will receive His mercy and we will find grace in our time of need. Having the right thoughts and attitudes and fixing our thoughts on Jesus will help us in our circumstance and our period or time in life. True happiness cannot be found or can, sorry, can be found in any situation of life when we recognize that God is at work. So it might not be going according to your plan or you might not feel God's presence, but if you recognize that even so, Lord, I can't feel you and I don't know what the next turn is, if you recognize that you are still working in me, you'll make it. God, you are still at work in me because Christ is with us and His return is certain. We can act calmly in the face of painful and difficult situations. Peace comes when we focus on the things that provide lasting value in our lives. So what in your life do you value as lasting? Just think about that. What in your life do you value as top in your life or priority in your life? The more we commit ourselves to knowing God's will through prayer and the study of His Word, the better prepared we are to help ourselves and others grow spiritually. So we can reinforce this um, in uh, Thessalonians chapter 5. Flip here. Got them. Verses 16. Or verse 16. Again, it says, Always be joyful. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. And I, I want to kind of stop right there. Never stop praying. Okay? I know for me, from personal experience, you know, as many of you are, you're um, a husband or you're a dad or you have many, you have, wear, wear many hats. Okay? So, for me, it is, you get up in the morning and your feet hit the floor, it's time to go to work. It's time to get the day started. You got to make a living to provide for your family. So you have the, the hustle and bustle of your job. Okay? And after that, if you're raising kids right now, there's hustle and bustle once you punch the time clock at the house, too. When you're trying to raise kids. So I have a tendency to stop praying because I am busy. But right here it says, never stop praying. Never. Even when He hasn't answered you yet. Or maybe it's the answer you don't want to hear. Never stop praying. 
even when it's not easy. Sometimes I get up and I, I don't want to pray. I want to go back to bed. Okay? And I wish I could stand here and tell you that I always get up and I don't go back to bed, but I, sometimes I do go back to bed. But the point is, we never stop praying, and we are always joyful in our circumstances of life. It goes on to say in verse 18, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Be thankful in all circumstances. Sometimes that's difficult to do. I know from personal experience, my attitude stinks whenever things aren't going my way. I don't know where my kids get that from. But my attitude is not the best sometimes. And I have to be reminded and refocus that no matter if things aren't going my way or not, or uh, certain circumstances that was out of my control happened in life, I need to be thankful in those circumstances and to never stop praying and to be joyful. If we follow these many instructions as God provides, as, yeah, if we follow the, these many instruct, I need glasses, guys, this is bad. Yeah, if we follow these many uh, instructions so we can, as we can with God's help, we will, wow, we will be well on our way. We are called to minister to others and be actively active participants in God's ongoing work on earth. This gives hope to others and preserves our own spiritual gains as well. The more we do our part in God's will that He has for us and to say yes to what He wants us to do, while it might be painful, while I might have been asked to do this with a couple hours before church started, luckily most of the stuff's already written down right here, so it helps out. We can gain spiritually to saying yes. It might be painful or it might be a little inconvenient, but it's for God, right? That's, we want to show what God has done in our lives by showing love to others. So, to kind of reinforce, most of us know that life is, it's not the most comfortable, it's not the most comfortable time. You know, we have uh, many trials and tribulations that God told us about that we would have. But holding on to God's truths and renewing our minds and attitudes will help turn our attention to the one that has made a way for us. Not only made a way for our salvation and to be with God forever, but He has made a way here and now as we live this life on earth. He has made a way to live it with joy and in abundance with Him in relationship with Jesus Christ while we are here. A personal relationship. You don't have to go through a secondary channel. You can talk straight to God Himself and present your requests as you go through life. Your worries, your praises, and things that you don't understand. And He will shed light and answer you. So, in Hebrews, to kind of tie all this together, chapter 4, yeah, chapter 4, verse 12, okay, this right here, relationship with God and what He says about us right here is our main weapon, right? This is what we, this is what our foundation is built on. So, when things are rough 
and we don't understand and we are doubtful and we don't feel God's presence, this might be a good place to kind of get back to, isn't it? Right here. Rather than just wonder why. So, it says in verse 12, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing, nothing in all creation is hidden from God. So God's not surprised with maybe... uh, where you're at in life or surprised by a certain situation in your life that happened or even surprised about where our country is headed. You can't surprise Him. Nothing is hidden from Him. Everything is naked and exposed before His eyes and He is the one to whom we are accountable. God is the one that we are held accountable. I am thankful today that Jesus took my sin upon Him on that cross because there is no way that I could stand before God by myself. No way. Not with, no matter how many good deeds that I think I have done, There is no way I could stand before God on my own. So, in conclusion, as we go through our week here of Thanksgiving, you know, we're all going to, they tell us to kind of uh, uh, maybe not have such a big Thanksgiving or make it into small groups, but um, as you go through your week of preparing for Thanksgiving, I want you to remember or to always have in the forefront in your mind um, what God has done for you and really what you're thankful for. Even in tough times, that can, I know me personally, that has been my rock that has brought me through it. Remembering and reminding myself God's truths that I am loved and I have been redeemed and He has forgave me. Renewing your thoughts and your attitudes is a daily, a daily thing. You have to choose each and every day when we get up, what kind of attitude am I going to have today? And if it's not so good, we need to ask Jesus to help us. I know I do. Each and every day, God is with us. And He will help us and give us grace in our time of need. So as we go through this week, just remember that the Word of God is alive and powerful in each of our lives. Each and every day, when we're doing good and we're on the mountaintop or we're in the valley, God's Word is still alive in us. He's still there. So we'll close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank You for this day that You've given us, Lord. We thank You for being able to come before You, Lord, and gather and to praise Your name. I pray that Your love will overwhelm or overflow us this week and for weeks to come, week after week, that our minds will be renewed in You, Lord, and that we will keep growing in knowledge and understanding. For we need understanding. 
and what really matters so we can live pure and abundant lives, lives while we're here on earth, choosing each day to live in you and for you with thankfulness and obedience until your return, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.